Hey guys, so you will not believe what kind of topic I'm going to discuss today. It is so dark and unbelievable. And really, if you're not into serial killers, if you're not into some dark shit, don't listen to this podcast. Just don't. (laughs) So the title goes... A woman befriends the serial killer who murdered her mother. So, not only did she befriend him, she said that he is now like a father figure. A man that murdered her mother. A serial killer. So, this woman's name is Jennifer Weiss. Um, and, uh, she, uh, became friends with this serial killer called Richard Cottingham. And he's also known as the Torso Killer. And she claims that he had helped her learn more about her mother And she says that he may even bring closure to the families of other victims. What closure can this guy bring to the families of other victims? If I was a family of other victims, I'd be super pissed. Oh my god. I just find this story unbelievable. I, I, I am trying not to judge. I'm trying to have an open mind, but it's such an unbelievable uh, story. So, yeah, she, not only does she consider her mom's killer as a friend, but also as a father figure. And she believes that her relationship with the man might have some practi- uh, practical benefits. Uh she views it as a way to learn about her mother and to help bring a sense of uh, closure and justice to the families of other victims. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. Like, are you sure you're gonna get a closure from this man? A serial killer? So Jennifer Weiss's mom was named... And I'm not going to be able to pronounce this properly. Dide Godarci. Probably didn't pronounce that name properly. She was found dead alongside another unidentified woman in a Times Square motel room in 1979. She was 22 years old and her death was brutal. She had been beheaded and set on fire and her skull was never found that is so fucked up so her killer uh this man uh, richard cottingham he was a computer operator and he was married with three children of his own and he lived what you might consider a normal life So, basically, nobody suspected him to be a killer. But behind that was a terrible, evil man. Behind that facade that he's a normal, everyday guy. He is known as the Torso Killer due to his habit of dismembering his later victims. Okay, so (laughs) he also chopped off the hands of the victims in order to mask their identities and skirt criminal charges, according to Bergen Records. That is so messed up. And do you know, check out how many people he killed. Cottingham arrested for a string of deaths in the early 80s. In, 90, in 1984, conviction of Godarty slaying was one of six in New York 
a New Jer Jersey. Allegedly, he's claimed to have killed up to 100 people. 100. How the fuck? Not trying to judge, but how the fuck do you consider a man that killed 100 people a father figure? Somebody needs to check on this girl, because that is some next level fucked up shit. She visited him, this girl, um, this uh, Jennifer girl. Uh, she visited him more than 30 times. And yeah, basically she said that he thinks of him uh, like a father figure. <laughs> and it says, in the article it says... As many daughters do with their boomer relatives, she helps him figure out how to use his iPad. Girl, he's not like your boomer relative. He killed 100 people. And where on earth does a guy get an iPad in jail? What? And, and she says... She said, uh, in order to do this, I had to build up actual forgiveness and love. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> she said, she observed some positive changes in the Torso Killer and she found that he uh, showed empathy. She watched him cry when he, uh, when he found out that one of his victims was discovered by her sister and how badly it affected her. Yeah, I don't think that this man has empathy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what she observed, but... I don't know what she observed, but if this man was capable of killing 100 people... He does not have empathy. I mean, seriously, come on. Uh, she said, uh, Jennifer said that her friendship with the serial killer has also made her feel close to her mother, whom she knew very little about. Uh, Jennifer hopes that continuing to talk to him will lead to the discovery of her mother's skull. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, if she needs some information from him, such as where her mother's skull is, that makes sense. But if she visited him 30 times, couldn't he just tell her already? And how, I, I just wonder what, I just wonder what's going through her mind. And, and the next thing that she said, oh, it pisses me off, actually. She said, I'd love to sort through the mess he made, she said. It's like, come on, dad, we gotta pick up these pieces because he's so old. Sometimes when I talk to him, I'll say, while snapping her fingers, Hey Pops, to bring him back to, let's do this for humanity. <laughs> this shit. Because he has no desire to do anything for humanity. Because he has no desire to do anything for humanity. No fucking shit. Well, he has desire to do something for humanity. He has desire to kill humanity. I mean, <laughs> let's sort through the mess he made. What? It's not just a mess. It's he killed people, beheaded them, set them on fire, chopped off their hands. It's not like he, I don't know, threw a plastic bottle into the ocean and polluted the ocean. No, it's like... Oh my god. I mean, it's such a sad s situation. But at the same time, I think this girl needs help. 
he doesn't need help. Okay, first of all, I don't believe that there's any help in the world for him. Uh, for his crimes, he should be punished. But this girl, she's clearly going through something like somebody needs to tell her that this is not okay. You don't tell a serial killer, come on, that we got to pick up these pieces. I feel like, I feel like she's a broken girl that really needs, desperately needs some help. So I, I don't, I don't even know what to say to me. This is incredible. <laughs> And I don't like the way she's trying to humanize him because he's far gone. The crimes that he committed, you cannot say, oh, well, he's feeling empathy. That doesn't matter now. He killed these people. They're dead. They're never going to come back. You cannot possibly say, well, he cried when I told him that uh, this dead girl's sister found her. No, that's, that sounds so wrong. Oh, I don't, I don't know what to say. I just found this story incredible. <laughs> And I, I really did need to make a comment on this because you don't hear this every day. So I, I really got interested in why do people fall in love with murderers? I found a CNN article. Ted Bundy and Richard, the nice talker, Ramir... Uh, how the fuck do you pronounce his name? Ramirez and Hillside Stranglers, Kenneth Bianchi, I guess, and Angelo Buono. Oh my gosh, I swear to God, if I'm pronouncing their names wrong and there are some super famous people, oh fuck me. Okay, so <laughs> they're all famous killers and... Do you know what they have in common? All four got married in prison after being convicted for their crimes. Oh my gosh. So so what's up with this? What's up with people falling in love with serial killers? So there's this woman, Shyla Eisenberg, and she's the author of Women Who Love Men Who Kill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She spoke with dozen, dozens of women who had a relationship with murderers. And she found that there are two primary groups of people who end up with murderers. So get this. Two people who fall in love, two pe types of people are, one, those who fall in love with quote, ordinary murderers because they believe that they see the true good side of them. So they believe that they see the good side of them, the real side. Honestly, that makes sense. And I'll tell you why. Growing up, every girl that dated a, let's say, high school bad boy, you know, those bad boys in high school, Every girl believed that she changed him. Oh my God, he stopped, I don't know, doing all of these bad things because he got in a relationship with me and he is changed. Every single girl believed that. Every single girl that dated these guys, I mean, not every single girl in high school, obviously. Not to generalize girls. So yeah, there's this strange belief that these bad boys that, that I guess could be changed through true love or whatever. Yeah, and guess what? 
none of them changed any of these bad boys. <laughs> Just like none of these women changed these serial killers. So another type, the second type, is those who start relationships with these notorious tabloid headlining murderers because they are drawn to the spotlight. Yeah, honestly, that makes sense too. Because there are so many people that, that are desperate to become famous. And sometimes it doesn't even matter if you're famous in a good way or if you're famous for doing something bad. Some people just want to be famous. And yeah... So, Charles Manson, I think we all know who Charles Manson was, was recently engaged to be married to, yeah, okay, so, Eisenberg said, well, next thing she said that they're blinded by love, blinded by love, so in her research, Eisenberg found that many in both groups clinch to the belief that their convicted boyfriends and husbands are in fact innocent. Yeah, yeah, I heard of that. I heard of these women, some of these women, that actually don't even believe that these guys killed people. So Eisenberg said they were deluded that the men had not committed the crimes. Yeah, I, I believe that, I, definitely. There are these ladies who believe that their man just did not commit the crime. So Eisen, Eisenberg points out to the woman, to the women like Carol Ann Bone, my god, I must have butchered her name, no pun intended, uh, she began her relationship with Ted Bundy while he was on trial for two murders and three assaults at Florida State University. She married him and had his child. And later, Bundy confessed to 30 murders. Yikes. Oh, yikes. Poor child. Can you imagine being a child of Ted Bundy? Damn. So, the harsh reality is that, <laughs> the harsh reality, well, the harsh reality is that many states do not allow conjugal visits. So, for some of these couples, there is never even a chance to become physical. So, but Eisen, Eisenberg says, uh, she says that women, for the most part, don't even mind that. They don't even mind that they're never going to have probably uh, sex with these guys because they're interested in the romance, <laughs> in the romance, <laughs> in the romance with serial killers. So dating someone who's serving a life sentence often involves an intense level of courtship. Most of these prisoners have nothing but time on their hands, so they shower their girlfriends with affection. <laughs> oh my god. So, quote, uh, quotation, he paints pictures for, for you, writes poems for you, writes 30, 40, 50 page letters. It's an enormously romantic relationship, Eisenberg says. <laughs> For many, it's like you are living in your own romance novel. Damn. Well, if you want a girlfriend, just become a serial killer. No, don't. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, that's a bad way to get a girlfriend. I mean, he writes poems for... I, I wonder what kind of poems... What kind of poems do serial killers write? 
What kind of page letters did they write? <laughs> yeah, so it's like living your own romance novel. I think I'll skip on that. Uh, I wouldn't date a girl that's a serial killer. <laughs> I think I'd skip on that romance. So she says, uh, a lot of these women have come from abusive childhoods or they were battered, battered, uh, battered. Uh, I don't even know what this word means, women. So some were physically, psychologically or verbally abused, but they were all victims. So she came with a theory that if you are in a relationship with a man who is behind bars for life or on death row, he can't hurt you. You are in the driver's seat and in control for maybe the first time in your life. I don't know. I mean, if you're looking for a man that's not going to hurt you, maybe you shouldn't look for a man that's in prison. So I guess the idea is he's behind bars for life. He or he's on a death row, he's going to be executed, so he can't hurt you. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that does that sounds weird. So for all the intensity, many of these relationships don't last. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean. You can really expect that these relationships won't last. So, that's it. That's the topic I covered. Um, yeah, I was really interested in... Well, first of all, that first topic caught my attention because a woman considering uh, a serial killer as her father figure definitely blew my mind. And not just any serial killer, but ser a serial killer that killed her own mother. So that blew my mind. So yeah, I decided to do a little bit of digging and found the CNN article about all these great romances uh, between serial killers and these <laughs> weird women. Uh, so if you're, if you are looking for romance, please don't look for it from a girl or a guy that's in prison. Yeah, so that's it, guys. And until next time, guys, take care and bye-bye.